Viktor Frankl said, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way. This is Finding Human with Sue Jackson. Stay tuned for the next hour as Sue explores the human psyche, what makes us tick and how to live better, more fulfilled and more meaningful lives. Only on 101.9 High FM. Hello, this is Sue Jackson on the Finding Human program. Sorry, we're starting a little bit late because my computer was just not going on to Zoom for some unknown reason. Today, I am very excited to welcome Linda Levy as my guest. And our topic is, in life, we go forward. We're going to tell you how we came to this topic shortly. But we would like to dedicate this program to the memory of Alec Levy, Linda's husband of 47 years. Linda is a relation of mine. We, we shared in a mother-in-law, well, we, we, our mother-in-laws were sisters and our husband's co first cousin. Linda is a, a motivational speaker and she has been for the last 30 years. She's in great demand. She's highly respected and runs very popular courses. And she also does one-on-one -on -one counseling. She's a mom of five children. She's a mother-in-law, much loved, and a grandmother, also much loved. I have known Linda for close on 50 years, and I have always admired the way that she lives her life with joy, with wisdom, with gratitude, with love, and a great love and respect for Hashem. She has an aura around her that attracts people to her. So if ever you try and talk to Linda in a crowd, just know that you're going to share her with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> the Linda you will hear speak today is the person who lives her life consciously. And she lives by the motto, we are co-creators with Hashem, the higher power. Or we can be victims. And she says, let go and let God. Welcome, Linda. How are you feeling being here today? Oh, hi, Sue. I'm feeling totally, totally honored and privileged to be in your, in your company, on your show. Uh, it's one of my favorites. In fact, it is my favorite show on High FM. And when you invited me, I felt so honored and so grateful. So I'm looking so forward to being here with you. I'm so pleased to hear that, Lynn, because I've actually invited you before, but you said no thanks. Oh, did so, I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, so when we agreed this time, I almost fell oh, over, I must oh, admit. Oh, no, my fault. Sorry. Lynn, tell me about how did you come to, we came to the topic, because you said to me <clears> that <throat> about your mom, how she said, in life we go forward. Will you tell me why she said that? Okay, so my story goes back 50 odd years. I was 17 years old and uh, on the morning of my matric finals, my beloved father, who was really my life at the time, just had a heart attack and died. In the night, wished me good luck the night before, I was sitting on his lap and I told him how much I had to go through and he said to me, Lindy, in life, remember, this too will pass. And it was one of his last messages to me. And in the middle of the night, he had a heart attack and died. So the, the trauma of the day was just unexplainable. But that night, after the funeral and everything, my mom and my uncle David came to see me in my room. And my mom said to me, Linda, I think you must get up tomorrow morning and write matric. And I just could, I'd never heard anything more absurd in my life. And I said, Ma, I've just lost the closest person to me. How do you just switch the switch off and go right the trick? And she said these words, which I want to, to preface by saying 50 odd years ago, in fact, it's more, it's 54 years ago, 55 years ago, there was not a self-help book on the shelves. There was nothing like there is today. There was no Yiddish cart in Pretoria where I grew up. Very, very, the, the, the rabbi was religious and that was it. And I um, looked at her and I said to her, how do you switch the switch off and, and go? And she said, Linda, in life we go forward. It's not what happens to us, but what we do with it that counts. And truly, truly, that was channeled through her because there was no language like that in those days. And that has become our mission statement for, for all time. 
I dedicate everything to her and I always think of her with that mission statement because it, it is life must go forward. And she said, you go to bed, you think about this, you wake up in the morning and you see how you feel. And I think just hearing her comment, I felt I need to get up and go and do what I need to do. And you wrote my trip. I wrote my whole matric. It was two solid weeks of two exams a day, and I wrote my trick. I missed the first one, which was English, two English papers, which I couldn't pass my matric because English was essential, but I wrote a sub in English in February. I was accepted to college in Jobu, and my <coughs> life started like that. But those words have never left me. They are honestly my mission statement till this very day. And you know, Linda, I actually remember meeting your mom in Pretoria at Brenda's house, at Linda's mom-in-law's house. And she impressed me so much because at the time, both Leon, my husband and I, were very into spirituality and we were, we were very into the prophet Kahal Gibran and looking for meaning in our life. And it certainly wasn't coming from Judaism at the time. And your mom, her wisdom was just so palpable that I hung on every word that she said. And she quoted, she at the time, I think she was learning with the, what was his name? Dr. Barrett. Reg Barrett. Yes, Reg Barrett mm -hmm. in Hillbrow, I think, wasn't he? Uh, by the, by the Rosebank. It was in Rosebank. Right. And then also, mm -hmm. she um, she also loved the book, uh, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman um, Vincent. Uh, Vincent Peale. And I remember being so impressed by her. And you have literally carried on her message through your own life and your own losses. You've had many losses yeah, along the I way. Yeah, I have, Sue. I have. It started with my mm -hmm. dad. But um, Joseph, what's his name? Norman Vincent Norman, yeah. Peel was, that was written in 1927. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the book, the only book. And she discovered it through Reg Barrett. She called her a spiritual lover, but my mother was 39 when my dad died, wow. left four young children, and um, she was totally floundering, completely floundering, didn't know where to turn. Yiddishkeit was not even born then. My addict used to say Yiddishkeit wasn't invented then, and um, <laughs> certainly not in Pretoria. It started to come soon after, mm -hmm. but she went, traveled, and found Dr. Reg Barrett on some cruise, she said. He was a, a, a speaker there. On a day, day, and changed her life and as she read books that started to come out she gave to me and I honestly learned in her slipstream and as she learned I learned and when she passed away I was 35 I became the matriarch of my family at 35 absolutely mm -hmm. mad and I, I just remember my best friend the aura clots at the time said Linda now you carry on what your mother's taught you and you teach all of us. Alec and I had just moved to Joburg and um, get how my whole profession started. Just following in honor of my mother, an absolute reverence to her, Yehudi Bas Moshe, a total shiny light in my life. We absolutely adored Alec and he, her. And um, it's just, I started my courses then. I started learning things I didn't even know existed. And it's just been a forerunner for, for me and my fa family and friends and has truly carried me to this very day. All the things I learned in those years, I've never seen more relevant than today. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. The power of our thoughts, the power of our speech, the power of our attitude and actions. Just absolutely. That's how I'm living today to get through my story that I lost my husband a few years ago. I uh, know, a year ago. And uh, this is how I'm coping incredibly, incredibly well through this. Amazingly, Lind, really. And, you know, when you talk about your mom and your dad, and I know you lost your uncle, and your niece will get back to that show. This is Finding Human with Sue Jackson, only on 101.9 High FM. Hello, this is Sue Jackson, and I'm back on the Finding Human program with Linda Levy. And we are talking about in life we go forward. If you would like to join in the conversation or send us messages, please do so on SMS 34519 or telegram us on 061 895 You are listening to High FM 101.9. Linda, we were talking about your mom and your other mm -hmm. losses that you have had in your life. 
what we call accumulated losses and how often those losses prepare us for future losses. But I would like you to talk about Alec because that is a loss that you certainly never, ever expected. Do you mind telling me a bit about it? It was for you a life-altering experience, wasn't it? Oh, very much so. Very much so, Steve. Uh, in fact, just my first date with him was uh, almost a blind date. I knew who he was and I invited him totally randomly to my matric dance. And at that dance, I said to my best friends on, in the bathroom, as we all go to the bathroom <laughs> together, I said, this is the man I'm going to marry. And I know him. I knew him for a few hours at that stage, but my soul recognized him immediately. So it was a, a truly, I, I realized that any work that presented, and there was plenty over the years, and it always is, was my work that I had to face with him, and we had to get through together. And as Rabbi Tat said, you start off a marriage full of passion, full of excitement, and that's how it should end. Just going full circle with all the, you know, the trials of bringing up children and, and changing religion. I mean, here he said, he kept on saying, Ali wasn't from, and a big, big, big challenge in our lives was I was becoming from, and uh, he was not interested in the beginning. And I, my mom of blessed memory, is talking about her, said to me, Linda, get off his back. You are not responsible for his soul growth. <laughs> and I want to tell you that was a life changing bit of advice and I just went ahead on my own and he followed it miraculously I didn't go on my own I'm lying I totally handed it over to God I said Hashem this is your this is your stuff you help me with the kashrut you help me with you know the mikvah was a big thing because that you can't do on your own Shabbos you know was always a day I spent on my own until he came with me and um, big big things but always with Hashem running the show, me handing over, surrendering, and just loving Alec, knowing this is my mission. My big mission was to just bring us together through this huge big difference. And when he passed away, oh my goodness, it was the most unexpected thing. Even my children say that they expected him to go till 90. He was strong, he was fit, he was healthy. And uh, he just got COVID and uh, landed up in the links field hospital and he was doing very well he was on his own to healing group it was actually everyone laughed about it he was on a rolling to healing group and he used to double for himself on the healing group <laughs> and thank everyone for doubling for him and and tell them to keep doubling and for eight days he did well and then all of a sudden he told my daughter Dina who was a doctor and was allowed to visit him because everyone was it was a COVID ward and I was the well, I went to test straight after taking him into the hospital and I had it, so I was very isolated at home. And uh, she said, she said to Dina, take home all these things, Dina. I'm coming home tomorrow. I don't need this anymore. And it was very interesting because he did go home, but to a different home that we all expected mm -hmm. very suddenly. And um, very surprisingly is a word. It, the whole world was shocked and we are still reeling. I think we've been in a, in a state of disbelief for over a year now. We said, commemorated his Lord's Heart about a month ago. And um, yeah, it's been something that my, definitely my uncle passing away, he took his own life at 40 and he was a very close connection. My mother died when I was 35 with a huge connection after my dad. And uh, my precious niece, Tiffany, who died at 11 years old. Uh, these things, as Sue says, prepare you in some way. I was no stranger to, to death and dying. Not that I was any star, but I'm using now, dealing with all this, every single incredible, um, it's not even a meta, it's a, a, what would you call it? Thoughts, the, the words, the what, what would you call it? What has helped you through? It's all those, the strengths that you have developed, the, the skills, attitude the skills, and the skills. That absolutely. I've been teaching for 35 years, studying for 40 years, has now presented even, even, even more substantially in my life. And just to, to say that in terms of thoughts, I never, I knew they're powerful, but I've never experienced thoughts like, like uh, the power of thoughts like I am now. In fact, I don't think too much, Rabbi Wawa Jacobson said, 
on in an incredible shiur that was during the three weeks after Ali passed on, as we went straight into the Tisha B'Av area, that period, and he said, don't think too much. It's dangerous unless you're thinking the right thoughts. And I've, it's never left me. I, I taught that always, and it's presented so much. And in fact, I did an incredible seminar on Sunday morning by Rabbi Dov Bear Cohen, and he said, if you serve, he said, I thought the right wave. He says, if you are serving, and you take a look at where that wave is going to take you and you see rocks in front of you, get off your board. He says, don't take that wave. Mm. And it was so powerfully demonstrated. He lay across his desk showing <laughs> us, like simulating surfing. And he said, our thoughts are like waves. We don't have to go where if it's taking us into the rocks. And, of course, there are thoughts all the time that take us places that do make us cry triggers that certainly are very, very powerful in our lives, certainly at this tender time now in New Year. And we, I have to really, really monitor my thoughts and say, Linda, do you want that thought? No. Is that thought going to take you down a path you don't want to go? Yes. And then I will just take it away. I'll burn it. I will avoid the rocks. And, and you know, Linda, you also talk about receiving. And I found that very powerful. But just to go back to Alec for a moment, you know, I had COVID at the same time as you when when Alec was in hospital and you and I were in contact during the nights. For quite a few nights, we were sharing uh, breathing exercises mm. and you were so convinced that Alec was going to come home, but it was breaking your heart that you were not being, you are not allowed to visit him in the hospital at the time at all. And the two of you had done everything together. And here, when you felt that he needed you so much, you weren't there. How did you actually, the, the disbelief at his loss and not being allowed to be with him, how did you cope immediately at the time? Sure. So immediately at the time, um, when my children came home from the, the hospital, it was a Shabbos. He died on Shabbos. They walked home from, from and, and I opened the door and they just shook their heads. And I think a feeling of total disbelief came mm -hmm. over me. It took me, I don't think I still believe it. I must be honest, I, I just went and sat down. My brother, Sid and Ellie were with me at the time. And I just went and I sat down and I just, it, I've been processing at this for, for this, this information for a long time. Yeah. We were really mm -hmm. one unit, mm -hmm. honestly. Thank God we did what Rabbi Tat said. We went full circle. And the COVID two years of being just us two alone, no children, no grandchildren, no shopping, nothing, just him working at home and us being together, all was such a powerful, powerful time. A gift. We both kept saying this was a gift. And um, I just cannot be honest with you, Sue. My overwhelming feeling and emotion at the time was immense gratitude to God for all he gave me for this man, for our time together, for our special relationship, our special marriage. As I said in the beginning, never without issues, but we just move through them with God's help all the time. Emunah is my one thing God is holding me right now. He continually holds me, and when I need his help, boy, I ask for it, and he lifts me up. Because as Alec always said, I am a person of joy and he never wants to take that joy away from me. Isn't that so beautiful? Think, knowing that, I know that it's my place to be in joy. And, and I'm hearing it's from all sources, lots of different shiurim and things that we can be in joy even through heartbreaking shifts, even through the hard times. And it's, it's a different feeling. Of course, you've got it there always underneath, but my joy remains and he it's holding him it's so important for his neshama to know he couldn't be to see me cry ever mm -hmm. and um i cry i do cry for sure but i finish it off and then i shake myself off and i just get back on to into life and i know he's happy and proud of me for for just moving on as we say moving forward because i've never stood by Ruch Hashem, never felt i cannot get out of bed today never I get out of bed with such gratitude. I spend my day thanking God for absolutely everything. And as I thank, so more comes. More to thank comes. And my, my attitude of gratitude is just dominant. And I remember after Shloishim, 
um, the children said to me, and I just have to stay here, my children have been beyond, beyond, beyond. My children, my in-law children, which are my children, have just held me and carried me up until now. Them, I, I'm telling you, I've never such support and love from them. So that's been a huge, huge thing. Um, but they always, they said to me, Ma, do you want to say something after the Shloshim? And I said, yes. And we had a beautiful ceremony and I ended it off saying that I am in total gratitude for the love we shared, the marriage we had. The, in, in fact, Dina said Ma, it was a 50-year assignment. Married for mm-hmm. close on 47 years and three years dating. So I, I look at it like that. It was an assignment. 50 mm-hmm. magnificent, beautiful years of growing both he grew me, I grew him, and now it's time to separate. He's gone on, Rabbi Wawa Jacob said, when a couple faces this, he's gone on to his place with Hashem, and I am, um, he said that this, the, 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 part, the person who who stays behind the main behind has a mission still on earth. And please, God, Hashem should guide me to my mission, if it's a new mission, or to continue with my work as I have been for 40 years. And, and you know, I started by saying that the person that you are now is the person that I have always known. You've always had that aura of love, of gratitude, of moving forward in you. This, this is not new to you. And, you know, people listening in may, may think that you don't give yourself permission to be. Of course you do. But your overall being, says move forward you know there's a message came through from judy moritz thank you jude sue best show ever and and you have my best teacher with you today that's you lind enjoy kisses judy moritz oh, thank you what jude. A that's what a that's beauty. now you know victor frankel said and i actually think this is very much um, what what you are saying as well He said that love goes very far beyond the physical person of the beloved. It finds its deepest meaning in his spiritual being, his inner self, whether or not he is actually present, whether or not he is still alive at all, ceases somehow to be of importance. And then he says, there was no need for me to know. Nothing could touch the strength of my love, my thought and the image of my beloved. That my mental conversations would have been just as vivid and just as satisfying if I was next to him or her. He spoke about his wife. Wow, wow, wow. And you know, to someone wrote in just now that she gets triggered by going shopping and seeing the things that her husband loved and she has to leave the shop. So, you know, you asked how I feel about that. It's, it's a very beautiful question and we triggered all the time. But I, I, I have, it depends how I'm feeling at the time. If I'm strong, and thank God, most of the time I do feel good and strong, I will pass things that he loved or see things that he loved, and I'll say, Angel, look, there's what you enjoyed so much. And he loved the sun. And my children keep saying to me, Ma, Daddy, we just want to be in the sun. And every Shabbos morning after shul, he would come and sit with his hat and be in the sun. So I talk to him about it. I totally do. But of course, they triggered as well. Um, his car, for one thing, I never liked his car. It was a very big, you know, bulky man car. And when it came time to sell it, it was like, oh, you know, that every time I drove into my garage, there it was as if he was at home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, these things come and they trigger you. But I want to share a big trigger that happened to me last week. Um, I was at a Sheba house and... Um, you could just explain what a Sheba house oh, is? Okay. Someone close to me had passed on and I was just sitting with the mourners. And you you, you spoke about living um, with, with, the, with pain and in sadness and grief and living in joy, Sue. So this, this I have to share this story because it's so powerful. So I'm sitting there and a man walks in and I see he's in scrubs. He's a doctor, obviously, and... We were, it was a few minutes I didn't speak to him, but he was looking at me a lot. And I just thought, my goodness, why is he looking at me? Anyway, he walked with me to the door when I said, I'm going. And he started to talk about Alec. And it came out that he was a doctor in the Lingsville Clinic, a very close friend of my brother-in-law, Gary, who asked him, Gary asked him to come and visit Alec every 
day. And those meetings with Alec meant the world to Alec because we spoke every night, every day, whenever we could, um, Alec and I. And he told me about this Ivan who was visiting him every day and really adding so much value to his day. And um, this man that came out was the Ivan. Well, it like punched me in the tummy. In my heart, I just burst out crying. It was a trigger of note. Anyway, I went home and I thanked him. I thought to myself, um, okay, I cried from my core. Cried, cried really deep from my core. And I thought, okay, allow yourself. This is it. You, you really were with somebody who saw him right up till the end, a stranger who really gave value to Alex's life. And I'm going to carry on telling you what happened after this ad break. Okay. <laughs> You're getting clever there, Lynch, knowing when the ad breaks are. This is Finding Human with Sue Jackson, only on 101.9 High FM. This is Sue Jackson on the Finding Human program, and my guest today is Linda Levy. And we are to our topic is in life we go forward. If you'd like to SMS us, please do so on 34519 or telegram mm-hmm. us on 061 895 1019. Linda, I would like to talk to you a moment about giving yourself permission to cry. And you were talking about Ivan, the doctor who came through Gary to visit Alec every day. Can you go on with that? Okay. So I got home and, as I said, felt this to the core. It was truly one of the deepest triggers I've had so far. And I actually said to myself, okay, you have a 70th birthday party in half an hour. Now, you need to pick yourself up because you are not taking this feeling into the party. And I, this is how I talk to Hashem. I say, Hashem, lift me up. Pick me up with my hands. I lift my, make my hands up. Lift me up. I need to be with Simcha. I need to be with joy. I've had my cry. I want to make my friend Michelle happy at her party. And I didn't know what the party held or whatever. But I got dressed up and I, Hashem within minutes, helps me when I ask for him, he just lifts me up. This emunah that I have and this love I've built for him over the years is totally holding me now. And anyway, so I get to the party and I walk in and there she has got 60s and 70s music blaring out of this beautiful venue and she's dancing with her son and she hops me around and she said, come dance with us. And I'm <laughs> dancing with Michelle with my bag still in my hands. And the music was just, it's like, it was always a passion with Ali and me. We've just loved getting up and dancing from the dining room table. If we had a beautiful song playing on Ali's gramophone, he used to say, <laughs> he was going to play me a song on his gramophone. Anyway, I, I went down and sat down and I noticed that there were only really women there. And she had planned this as a party for us women. We just had Tisha B'Av, which is our time of huge mourning for those who are not really aware. Three weeks of mourning and we all needed to dance. And I just want to share with you, Sue, how I just, that my desire for joy and my ability to just leave that pain and to just dance and have the best, best time was just so therapeutic, so amazing and just so healing. So the message to people in pain, we can have both and we need to have both because they're both expressions and they don't diminish from each other. But there's a time, a time. And I said to Hashem, it's enough now. And I'm going to be the same with Michelle at her beautiful party. Isn't that wonderful? So, so you gave yourself permission. You really did. And, uh, and you found the meaning in that moment. And I think that's what so often um, a tremendous loss like this puts us into an existential crisis. And we have to find out who are we? Who am I in this crisis? So for you, Lynn, you have you've always searched for meaning and found meaning in very many ways. But you have now had to look for a new sense of a self and a new identity. Who do you feel that you are? Are you very changed from the Linda you were? Or are you the same person with more strengths? Phew, that's a difficult one, Sue. You know, we we need, we are born to grow. We are born to grow. And I think with these massive challenges that come to us, wrapped in all different packages, whether it's difficult marriages, difficult children, illness, 
financial issues, loss of a loved one. All those things are gift wrapped, wrapped in different pekalach from God to say, find me, find God, find yourself, find your strength. And I definitely am stronger for this, definitely. I, I, I feel that I will only get stronger. Um, I feel more tender in terms of compassionate. I've always been a compassionate person. But I, I think I see the role of people's pain far greater, far deeper. And I just see that there is a, a reason for it. And that's why we need to just have the emuna that whatever happens to us is for our growth and for our good. And it's also crucial. And in this this time of such crisis worldwide, and, and of course the whole COVID story that really hit the world with such a force, we we need to see lessons, look for lessons, and, and be stronger people. Not say, how will I ever cope? How poor me? Never, never, never. Poor me. Feel it for a while and then just shake yourself off and say to God, lift me up, Hashem. I need to be strong. I need to go out there and be an inspiration. I need to be, you know, somebody who can help others. So I feel that God's influence on my life is just so huge, holding me and keeping me up in my joy. And I want to just say something before. Yeah, and huge emuna, huge, huge. Just explain what emuna is to you. Oh, it has so many meanings. It's faith. It's relying on God to bring through what you need at the time of need. I think that's the way I can put it most clearly. When I need him, he is there for me. And it's so, so interesting. So he's a, he's a real gift in your life, Hashem. Enormous. He or she or whatever. Enormous. Presence. Enormous, enormous. And it's grown with my love of, of uh, Torah and Yiddish Kart. It's grown with my sadnesses, my losses. It's grown with my, my joys and my gratitude. <clears throat> Honestly, I just thank him all day for everything. I, I walk around thanking him. And I want to say, you know, you said to um, giving myself permission to cry, to laugh, to dance, to celebrate life with joy. My essence is joy, and I want to stay there. Obviously, I have my moments, but I want to revert back to joy. And I got a very powerful, powerful um, message on my cell phone from a Rebbitson called Joan Bernard. And I want to mention it by name because I got I know her well. Baruch Hashem, her. hundreds of messages from people all over the world, people I hadn't seen for 40 years, Alex Connections, Mark, and our connections. And this one changed my life. Because people expect you to grieve in a certain way. And she, the message was like this. Dear Linda, I pray that God will guide you to the perfect path that will facilitate your journey. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, it was sure. permission. So you talk about permission. It was permission to actually feel what I feel and to do things powerfully and positively with positive thoughts, with gratitude, with so much joy in 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 the in the presence of the pain as well. So I, I just have to thank you, Rebison Bernard, for your magnificent message, giving me permission. We've got messages that have come through, which I'm going to read after our break. This is Finding Human with Sue Jackson, only on 101.9 High FM. Hello, this is Sue Jackson on the Finding Human program on 101.9 High FM. Um, my guest today, and it's been wonderful, is Linda Levy, my relative. And we've got some lovely messages that have come through. Darling Lynn, we have traveled together for nearly 68 years. What a journey. You are magnificent. All my love, Viv. And then this one, hi, Sue and Lynn. Um, we are both loving this incredibly inspirational talk show with an amazing lady, Linda Levy. Um, uh, Kola Kabod to you both, sending fondest love. Sorry, I just can't quite see who that was from. Just let me see, Lynn. I'm having to show. Okay. Sending fondest love. Okay. Doesn't say who it was from. But, and then there's another one. Love and warmest thoughts from Marion Sachs and Godfrey Berman. Okay, let's go on, Lind. You know, um, you, are you, I wanted to ask you about the, the speech that we use, the 
the power of speech because it's something that that you actually often speak about and I often speak about. Tell me about the, what the power of speech means to you. So I think it goes so hand in hand with thoughts because first we think and then we speak. So what we are thinking about is what we'll speak about and how we'll react and act. And I, I, whatever, I teach this all the time to my children and even my grandchildren, what we say is what we will see in our lives. We have to watch so carefully. And the emotion that's put behind the speech is just so powerful to go out and create what we want. So I, I just feel that that is just such a huge, huge part of the power of thoughts, power of words. And Sue, I learned something so unbelievable the other day. I picked up a book um, in my shul called Garments of the Soul. And that is, they had a big picture of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, but it was disseminated in my, my uh, beautiful shul, the Mizrahi shul. And it says that our thoughts, our words, and our actions are garments of the soul. Love that. And it says, uh, why are they garments of the soul? And it says, because we can change uh, them. We can change our thoughts. We can change our words. We can change our actions and our attitude. That is what garments do. They get changed all the time, and it's so powerful to know they are known in Yiddishkeit, in the deepest Torah, Kabbalah, and the Zohar. They are known as the garments of the soul. So powerful because we can change them, and we, once we know that and believe that, we can have control, better control over our lives and start to attract so much more positive into our lives. And also, you know, those garments, whatever we can put back into our lives are the values that we have accumulated through the years and that we continue to accumulate. And every day, I think, a new value can come into our lives. And it is that those values that you've been talking about, of joy, of, of gratitude, our attitude, uh, you know, of how we actually speak to our fellow man, how we hear what people have to say to us, and the, the faith. The immuna. You know, Lind, you you got a message today that you wanted to end with, and we're going to be told shortly, not just yet, but I actually I want to give you time to to read that, please. I got this at midnight last night, and it is just so powerful. It's be the person who makes the effort, the person who loves without hesitation. Be the person who bears it all, the person who never shies away from the depth of their feeling or the intensity of their hope. Be the person who believes in the softness of the world, in the goodness of other people, in the beauty of being open and untethered and trusting. Be the person who takes the chance, who refuses to hide. Be the person who makes people feel seen, the person who shows up Trust me when I say, be the person who cares. And Sue, I think that epitomizes this magnificent program that you run. This, that, that is finding human. That is being human. And if we live by those principles of being there for each other, loving and trusting and, and just having the faith and the emunah to trust in God who runs the whole show, we will have a most successful experience of being human and thank you Sue for this incredible program and for all the things you've brought up for me today and hopefully that's been important to people. It certainly has and we will definitely I think have to do a follow-up in a few months time and look at your journey again and, and also we need to look at mm. send messages in about accumulated losses that they've gone through and and secondary losses somebody mentioned their dog that they had to give away and the flat that they had to leave. But um, I would like to actually just say that, Lynn, you really do epitomize that mm -hmm. defiant power of the human spirit, the ability to go on in your life with joy, with faith, and to influence so many other people. I would also like to say that I would like to send out my love to Gary, Alex's brother, uh, um, he might be listening in. If he's not, I know that he will really enjoy hearing about his beloved brother. Do you want to send him a message, Lynn? 
Yes, Gay, I sent the, the, the link to Felicia. I, I know you're working, but uh, Sue does, I think you do you do repeat these. Yeah, it's sessions. going to be on YouTube and podcast. Okay, and I will send in the podcast. Gary, I love you and so grateful for the love you shared with Alex. And just thank you, everybody, for being here with us, for, with, with us on this program, for doing this journey with me, and for all my family and friends and incredible community and all my loved ones just for holding me being with me and sharing my journey god bless you all thank you thank you most of all to sue for having me on this program and thank you linda and you know this came through to me by thomas wilder it says it's hard to turn the page when you know someone won't be in the next chapter but the story must go on I wish awesome. you blessing awesome. as your story Amen. goes on Thank and we you. share Thank our lives you. together. Thank you so much, Craig. Thank you, um, Makundi, and thank you, Bussi.